So there we have this really cool second order nonlinear differential equation. And we see it relates the square of the first derivative to the function its square as well as the second derivative of the function y. Okay, cool. So the first thing we should do is make a simplifying substitution. And that could be letting dy by dx equal u. And this further implies that the second derivative equals du by dx. But this introduces a problem. If we make use of these structures, that means the differential equation is now in three variables. We have y, x, and u. And we certainly don't want that. But we can fix that by using the chain rule. So working further with the second derivative means that I can write it as du by dy times dy by dx, and dy by dx is our u variable. So we have u times dy by dx equal to the second derivative of y with respect to x. And now with these substitutions in place, our differential equation translates to one half of u squared equal to four y squared plus y times u du, terribly sorry about that, du by dy. Now this new equation could use some rearrangement. So let's write this as yu du by dy plus 4y squared minus 1 half of u squared equal to 0 and expand using dy to get yu du plus 4y squared minus 1 half of u squared dy equal to 0. And the reason for writing it in this manner is to check whether or not we have an exact differential equation. So for that, let's call this function of u and y as m and this function n. Now for an exact differential, we need partial m by partial y equal to partial n by partial u. So let's check out whether or not that's the case. For the derivative with respect to y, oh, terribly sorry about that, of y u, we get a u term, whereas the partial derivative with respect to u of four y squared minus one half of u squared equals negative u, which is not equal, so the equation is not exact yet. I say yet because we can turn it into an exact equation by multiplying by a suitable integrating factor. Now, noticing that the only difference is a sign difference, I think it's pretty easy to come up with an integrating factor here, because if we multiply by one by y squared, that should do the trick. Now let's check whether this intuitive guess works. There are more formal algorithms, but that takes away the fun. Anyway, so now we have y by, no, it's u by y du plus four minus u squared by two y squared and dy equal to zero. So partial derivative with respect to y of this u by y term is, of course, negative u by y squared, whereas the partial derivative with respect to u of 4 minus u squared by 2y squared is, of course, again, negative u squared. No, it's a negative u by y squared. So, yeah. The differential equation is now an exact one, and we can write it in the form of the differential of some function being equal to zero. That is the function of u and y being a constant. And now to work out what exactly this function is. Again, because this is an exact differential, that means it's of the form partial f by partial u du plus partial f by partial y dy equals zero. And this means that partial f by partial u is u by y and partial f by partial y is four minus u squared by two y squared. Now to make light work of these two differential equations, taking the first one and integrating with respect to u we have f being equal to u squared by 2y 
plus some function purely of y. And to work out this function, we could just differentiate f with respect to y partially, and that of course would give us u squared minus u squared by 2y squared, that is, plus the derivative of g with respect to y. But wait a minute, according to our system of partial differential equations, partial f by partial y should be 4 minus u squared by 2y squared. So on comparison, we see that the derivative of g with respect to y is in fact equal to 4, which implies that g of y equals 4y. So that means our function of u and y is indeed u squared by 2y plus 4y, and this is equal to some constant of integration c. We're not done just yet. We still need to figure out how to express y in terms of x. And to do that, we'll first solve this equation for the u variable, meaning that we have u squared equal to 2cy minus 8y squared, or on taking the square root, we have either the positive or the negative square root. And remember that u was in fact dy by dx. So that means what we have is a nice separable differential equation in y and x. So on rearranging the terms, that is separating the variables, we have 2cy minus 8y squared and dy up here. And on the right-hand side, we just have dx. So on integrating, we have on the right-hand side x plus some other constant of integration, let's call it a. And on the left-hand side, we have an integral that can be solved pretty nicely using a completing square approach. So to solve the integral, let's first factor out negative eight inside the square root here. So we have y squared minus cy by four. And for completing the square, we should write this as the integral from, oh, it's the indefinite integral. Terribly sorry about that. I'm pretty used to solving indefinite, uh, to solve indefinite integrals over here. The only time you ever see indefinite ones are when I'm solving differential equations, or that one time I evaluated that e to a matrix integral that was pretty cool. Anyway, so we have negative eight already, and y squared, what we need is two times y times c by eight. So that's the missing term we need. We need to add the square of c by eight minus the square of c by eight as well. So that means we have integral dy divided by negative eight times the square of y minus c by eight minus c squared by 64. And some, wait, this is a square over here as well. Some simplification is in order. We could write this as eight y minus c all by eight, and that squared gives me, again, 64. Multiplying out the eight, we still have square root eight, so that means integral root eight dy divided by eight, no wait, the negative sign there, so that means I have c squared minus eight y minus c squared. Yeah, that seems right. And now the structure we have is for an inverse sine function. So this implies that I would be inverse sine of, uh, wait, there's an 8y. Now nah, that thing's covered because of the differential element. No, it's not. So we could write this as 8 times the reciprocal of square root eight. Yeah, that maintains the equality. One by root eight. Now we've taken care of the differential element. That means we have inverse sine of eight y minus c divided by c. Okay, so that's the integral. And this thing is supposed to be equal to x plus another constant a. So this implies that one by 
root 8 times the inverse sine of 8y minus c by c equals x plus a. And now to clean stuff up. So this implies that we have inverse sine. The, eight, the root 8 term can be multiplied. Great. So we have 8y minus c by c equal to the sine of x times root 8 plus a times root 8. And of course, the root 8 can be absorbed into the constant a as well. That's great, which implies that now expanding by c, then we can add c. So we have y equal to 1 by 8 times, we can factor out a c here, and we're left with 1 plus the sine of a plus x times root 8. And of course, we can absorb the 8 into the constant c. And the integral had a plus or a minus sign before it as well. So that would translate to multiplying out the root 8 term as well. Okay, so this could be a plus or a minus sign. There you go. So that's a pretty cool solution for a really cool differential equation. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.